The seventh surah is one of many that ties Islam to terror. It began, as you may recall, with Allah launching a blitzkrieg attack on some unsuspecting town folk. His line, Our terror came unto them while they slept, was chilling. We covered the first half of this revelation in the third chapter, as it devolved into a disturbing conversation between Allah, Satan, and Adam. Now it's time to jump back in where we left off. Quran 7 verse 39 The first will say to the last, See there, no advantage have you over us, so taste the torment you have earned. To those who reject our signs and deny our revelations, treating them with arrogance, no opening will there be of the gates of the garden of bliss until the camel can pass through the eye of the needle. Such is our reward for the guilty. They shall have a bed on the floor of hell and coverings of fire. This is how we reward them. The Quran may be the only book that is more racist, hateful, and violent than Mein Kampf. Hitler gave six million Jews a bed of fire. Mohammed's dark spirit could have been his inspiration. I have a copy of Mein Kampf, published immediately after Chamberlain signed the Munich Pact, giving most of Czechoslovakia to Hitler. The land for peace process was complete. The war had yet to begin. With that in mind, I want to quote from the translator's introduction. As I do, I want you to mentally substitute 9-11 for the annexation of Czechoslovakia, Mohammed for Hitler, the Koran for Mein Kampf, and Islam for Nazism. The Pact of Munich, or 9-11, has awakened the American public as never before to the seriousness to the world and to themselves of the Nazi, or Islamic, program and consequently to the possible significance of every page of the book that can be justly regarded as the Nazi or Islamic gospel. Here in its entirety, for the American people to read and judge for themselves, is the work which has sold in Germany, the nation of Islam, by the millions, and which is the best written evidence of the character and spirit of Adolf Hitler, or Mohammed, and his government. Mein Kampf, or the Quran, gives the full flavor of the author's mind, conveying his motivations. As if they were talking about the Quran and its author Muhammad, the translator said, Hitler, or Muhammad, was not an artist in literary expression, but a political profiteer often indifferent to grammar and syntax. Mein Kampf, or the Quran, is a propagandistic essay by a violent partisan. As such, it often warps historical truth, sometimes ignoring it completely. We have, therefore, felt it our duty to accompany the text with factual information, which constitutes an extensive critique of the original. No American would like to assume responsibility for giving the public a text which, if not tested in the light of diligent inquiry, might convey the impression that Hitler, or Mohammed, was writing history rather than propaganda. Fifty million people perished because we did not heed these words. In conclusion, read Mein Kampf and the Quran with a clear eye, and the book will show you what manner of man their Fuhrer, the prophet, is, one who as a boy had nothing excepting a passionate belief that Germany, the nation of Islam, must obtain a larger place in the sun with the help of the sword. The engines of industry now spin round in trepidation, and the engines of war are piled giddily in higher and higher pyramids. Already the latter are all that really count. The former serve only to create an illusion. There will be no stopping this doctrine until in the world of ideas or ideals there are those which are stronger than those contained in Mein Kampf or in the Quran. It is our profound conviction that as soon as enough people have seen through this book, lived with it until its revelations are so startlingly vivid that all else is obscured by comparison, the tide will begin to turn. They said, We have the deepest regard for the German, Arab, people, so we have elected to set down without malice, yet with all the truth that we can muster, the record of Hitler, or Mohammed in our case, and his struggle, recital. Today the stakes are even higher. 
with weapons of mass destruction, a billion may die in the wake of our ignorance. So in an attempt to postpone what may be inevitable, starting in the Mein Kampf chapter, I will compare Hitler's rant with the Koran and Nazism to Islam. But between now and then, take a deep breath and continue to journey with me through the mind and motivations of Hitler's twin, the Prophet Muhammad. Muslims claim that the 103rd surah is a matchless specimen. Madudi says, A whole world of meaning was compressed into its brief words, which is too vast in content to be expressed even in a book. Imams have rightly said that if the people only considered this surah, it alone would suffice for guidance. Quran 103, verse 1. I swear by time, most surely man is in loss, except those who believe and do good, and enjoin on each other to bear in fortitude the trials that befall. That's it, the whole thing, start to finish. While it was neither really good nor really bad, at least it was really short. Let's try another Blitzkrieg surah. Quran 104, verse 1. Woe to every kind of scandalmonger and backbiter. Ah, there we go, back to the Mohammed we've come to know. Who amasses wealth and count it. He thinks that his wealth will make him immortal. Every time Mohammed takes a stab at religion, he fouls it up. The first time he tried this, he claimed that rape, sex with slaves, was a means to heaven. Now he's saying that the rich are scandalmongers because they think wealth, not faith, will bring immortality. But that's nonsense. Wealth is most often accumulated by bright and industrious people. As such, they are seldom delusional. Muhammad, however, was, and wealth ultimately brought him immortality. Thievery in Medina saved Islam and made a failed prophet infamous, immortal in the minds of billions. Quran 104, verse 4. By no means he will be sure to be thrown into that which breaks him into pieces. Or, Nay, but verily he will be flung into the consuming one. Or, No, he shall most certainly be hurled into the crushing disaster. I have provided several translations so that you might not be cheated out of this wondrous pearl. Quran 104, verse 5. What will explain to you that which breaks him into pieces? Or, what the consuming one is, or what the crushing disaster is. It is the fire kindled by Allah, which leaps up over them, penetrating the hearts of men. It shall be made to vault over them. Lo, it has closed in on them, in pillars outstretched. Allah personally kindles the fires of hell. Please let that linger in your mind. Islam's hell is not separation from Allah. Hell is where Allah lives, to burn 999 out of every 1,000 people. The 79th surah opens with oaths sworn by angels akin to Nazi SS. Our illustrious Muslim cleric explains, The people have been told the hellish torments which you regard as absolutely impossible are not difficult for Allah, even though he will have to make lengthy preparations. Just a single jolt will upset this system of the world, and the same people who were wont to deny it will be trembling in fear, terror-struck at what they thought was impossible. He continues, Then, relating the story of the prophet Moses and Pharaoh, the people have been warned. You know full well what fate the Pharaoh met as a consequence of belying the messenger and rejecting the guidance brought by him and endeavoring to defeat his mission by trickery and deceit. If you do not learn a lesson from it and do not change your ways and attitude accordingly, you also will have to meet the same fate. In other words, my conclusions are identical to those of the Muslim sages. We only differ when it comes to Muhammad's inspiration and motivation.